So the next thing I did was the topology and baking. For the backpack it wasn't hard as I already had a good base to start with. So I just opened the previously saved version of Blender, the ones where I haven't applied the subdivision surface modifier and models. Then I just cleaned up a bit. I deleted the modifiers and deleted some loops. As I had the specific polycon I had to stick with, I ended up making the straps on the sides as planes. This way I saved a lot on polycons. So the entire backpack had 960 triangles. Then I unwrapped the entire low poly model. I packed everything in just one UV. One add-on I really like using in Blender is called UV tools. So nowadays there are really a lot of amazing add-ons in Blender for different usage. I like using this one specific as I have been using it in previous versions in Blender also and it helped me a lot. So as I said there are probably a lot of them who do pretty much the same stuff but I like using this add-on. So UV tools just help me straighten the UVs with one click. So for example when I was unwrapping this strap by default you get this curly strap and by clicking on UV tools check transmission and vertical and straighten and it straightens your UV. Note you have to select the edge loop in order to work properly and also if UV sync selection is turned on then it doesn't work. Straighter UVs are easier to pack. Also one recommendation for packing all of the UV islands in one texture is an add-on called Shot Packer. So check that also. So I like to have the low poly and high poly of the model in the same folder just so I could be sure that everything is named and placed properly. It is important for the low and high poly to completely align. Essentially, what you are doing with baking is you are transferring the details of the high poly model onto the low poly. Good practice is also importing decimated ZBrush models so you could easily manipulate with them in Blender. I'll explain the funny colors in a bit. So firstly, as you can see, the low and high poly completely align to one another. The backpack isn't perfectly mirrored because of the stretches, as you can see, so I had to bake both of the sides of the model. As for the straps, they are completely the same, so I deleted half of them and added them just after baking. I like to have all different parts separate, uh, so I have to check that and make sure that all of the parts of low poly have the exact name as high poly, the only difference is in the ending low or high. Regarding the funny colors, they are representing my ID map after baking. So my, for example, cloth, low poly, doesn't have the meshes like these bands. Regarding the geometry, it only has this cylinder, so I'm going to bake these details onto it. So, for example, after baking, if I want to color the band differently from the rest of the cloth, I can just use my ID map and easily select the part of the mesh I need. So, this is just one mesh and the goal is to color them as different as possible. I usually use complementary colors for one mesh. When you bake a mesh onto a plane, in high poly, you also have to have a plane, so when placing an opacity map, you can easily select the part which is going to be masked. I selected the entire high poly and exported this backpack high, and selected afterwards the low poly and exported it as backpack low. Backpack was ready for baking. As for the parrot, making the low poly was a bit more complicated. As the parrot is a character and it is going to be animated, I had to keep an eye on the topology. So it had to have the proper loops around its legs, wings, head. Also, the number of triangles was supposed to be around 1000 triangles. I didn't have a starting point on low poly like with backpack. I exported the high poly from ZBrush and imported it in Blender. At first I tried reducing the number of polygons using the zero masher and that way making the low poly. In the end it was easier and faster for me just to create low poly from scratch using again basic primitives in Blender. I just moved vertices and took in consideration to place the correct loops. One modifier that really helped me is shrink wrap in Blender. As I said, I had a high poly imported in Blender. While I was modeling low poly, I had the entire time shrink wrap modifier on. What he does is he allows an object to shrink to the surface of another object. From the drop down menu, high poly of the body of the part was selected. When I was satisfied with the results, I applied the modifier. I only model half of the parrot, as I said previously, because he is symmetrical. I also unwrapped only one half of the model. After unwrapping, I applied the mirror modifier. I selected the entire body of the parrot and merged vertices by distance. 
In order for me to be able to bake the entire model with, with already mirrored sides, I had to select the UVs from mirrored geometry and move the UVs by a value of 1 to the side. This way I was able to avoid some artifacts. I did this with all the remaining parts of the parrot and then ended up with this model. I triangulated the entire model before exporting it for baking. As with the backpack, I had to make sure that all of the parts of high poly have the same name as low poly. Again, I added materials with different colors to high poly for creating the ID map. Once I checked and made sure everything is properly placed, I exported separately high and low poly. Parrot was ready for baking.